Hi everyone, my name is Yu Chen. I'm a building performance engineer at Zero Envy. In this video, I'm going to show you an energy model geometry we created for one of our projects in the past. Um, I mainly wanted to show you the workflow and uh, also how convenient it is to use Revit to create the geometry for energy modeling purpose. Um, let me walk you through it. So what you're looking at here is a high-rise residential building and it's about 27 stories. Um, I will just rotate around to show you how it looks like. As you can see, this building is huge and it's um, the geometry is pretty complicated. Um, and you can imagine how long it is going to take if you work using energy modeling software to create the geometry from scratch. So that's why we use Revit. Um, so the way we created this model is by linking an architectural background into this Revit file so that we can trace everything and basically create a simplified version of this architectural model. So this is the architectural background. And because this build, this project has got two buildings, um, but we were only focusing on phase one, which is this building only. So you don't need to pay attention to anything that's going on here. And yeah, if you go to a floor plan, <clears throat> you will be able to see an architectural floor plan as well. So this is where everything starts. Um, we basically started by tracing exterior walls um, on level one. And once that's finished, we will do the internal partitions and you can also place uh, windows, door components. And these are door components, um, but we're using them for something else and I will explain later. And you can also see we have placed spaces here and give them names. Um, so one thing I wanted to say here that is really uh, helpful for of using Revit is if you have uh, typical floors, you know, if the next few floors have the exact same footprint and layout, what you can do is you can basically copy everything on this floor and paste them to the levels you want to paste them to, which you can do it this way. So that is really efficient. Um, one of the benefit of using Revit. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, and let me turn this off and we can see the geometry more clearly. So um, I wanted to show you guys a few things uh, here. As you can see, we have color coded everything. Um, so we have a Revit template. Um, every time when we start a new project, we will use that template to start with. And uh, all the building components are color coded. So, you know, we are, for example, we are using this color to representing um, exterior walls and we're using um, purple to represent roof. And you can see we have also been using roof components to create exterior shading. These are actually balconies. Um, later in the energy modeling software, these components will be uh, recognized as shading elements as well. So in Revit, you will just be using roof components to create horizontal shading. But if you wanted to create vertical shading elements, you will, um, in our template, you will be using this exterior shading, building shading here, and that will allow you to create a wall component, but it's gonna be recognized as shading, vertical shading elements um, in the energy modeling software, if you have like vertical things. So <clears throat> uh, the next thing I wanted to mention here is uh, these doors. So these are door components, but we are actually using them to represent spandrel panels. Um, you know, we want to do that so that we are able to differentiate um, spandrel panel from the rest of the wall. Because um, if you don't do that, and you you know you won't be able to assign thermal construction to a spandrel panel explicitly, right? So this way will allow us to create thermal construction later for spandrel only and for the rest of the wall. Um, and, 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 you know, creating spandrel, you know, so many spandrel panels in this Revit model is really fast. However, if you, again, you want to do it this in um, an energy modeling software, it's going to take forever to do because you have to place each spandrel panel on each floor. Whereas in Revit, you can, you know, do spandrel panels on one floor and if there are typical floors, you can copy paste them, right? So that's um, where Revit is really speeding things up. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> the other thing I want to show here is the glazing. 
So not only this project is heavily glazed, but also um, it's got a, a many different types of glazing. Um, if you go to a window and here you can see uh, we have created a list of uh, glazing types here and we have assigned all of them to the building. Um, if you look at one of these glazing and you can open its property and look at uh, what's in there. So under analytical properties, you can see we have assigned a glazing type to it. And um, Revit has got a default list of glazing types that you can choose from. So that's really helpful too. So that's how you can do it. Um, and yeah, um, you, you know, in Revit, you can just pick all the windows that you want that are under the same glazing type and you can change the glazing type of those windows. <clears throat> and you know, if again you do, if you were to do this in an energy modeling software, it's going to be really slow. You kind of have to go into each floor, uh, each room, and pick a surface and assign a glazing type to the window. So again, you know, that's where Revit is super helpful. And just to clarify, um, the glazing type list, uh, the default Revit glazing type list we just saw. Uh, those aren't the actual glazing types we are going to use in the energy model. Uh, the point of selecting unique fenestration types in Revit uh, is to make sure, you know, have, having them assigned by type in Revit uh, before the model gets imported in the energy modeling software. Um, so we don't have to do that in the energy modeling software, uh, which is super slow. And then we will just need to update the names and the properties in the energy modeling software as necessary. Uh, without needing to reassign them again. Um, yeah, so that those are a few things I wanted to show you uh, why we want to use Revit, you know, especially for a big project like this, right? Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I will export this model to a GBX ML file and, um, and I will import that into an energy modeling software. And let's do that. Um, you will go to File in Revit and do export to GBXML and select the second, second option. Um, so this dialog is going to show up and this is basically where you can change a bunch of settings before you export. Also, this also serves, um, you know, a good first pass where uh, you can check your geometry to make sure they're good before you export to anything. Um, as you can see, um, this visualization is show you uh, the GBXML file. Um, this other building is also showing up here, but um, it's just reflecting the architectural background. It's not solid, so it's not really in your file, so uh, you're fine. And um, yeah, and if you go to details, um, here's where you can uh, check each individual space and see what's uh, in there. Uh, you can look at their properties and also if any of these rooms are problematic there will be a, a warning sign at the beginning so then you can just scroll down to check if all of them are good it looks like my model is okay so let's just do next and export this to um, <clears throat> the project directory so i'm calling this model uh broken because i um, purposefully uh break this model just to show you guys how to find the issue later and go back to revit and fix it um yeah let me pause and come back here because it's going to take a while to export. Okay, um, the model is exported to GBXML file, and I have also pulled up IES virtual environment. That is the go-to energy modeling software we use at Zero Andy. Um, so if you are using IESV as well, go to File, Import, Vim file, and just pick the file you want to import. All right, so before it completes importing, um, this dialog shows up and it's basically, again, where you can uh, change a bunch of settings uh, to choose what you want to import. So this is basically asking you, uh, what are the rooms you wanted to import? Uh, we definitely need all of them. And um, uh, here is where all the shading elements are saved. And you can save, you know, um, check all of them as well because we need all of them go to next. I will just click through for the purpose of this demo. Um, but I do want to show you this construction is glazed. 
Um, so because these are what I have created in Revit, right? Uh, I have created all the glazing in Revit and assigned them to the building. So they are being recognized and being imported. And that's exactly what I want. And then let's go to next and finish. All right, this is the geometry. Um, and I always do one more thing, which is to turn off the inner volume because uh, we don't really need actual like physical wall thickness uh, in, the, in the geometry to, to, for simulation. We want to find that later when we create a construction. So then here is the model of geometry. And you can use this guy to look at the 3D rendering of this model. So that's the 3D rendering of the model. And as you can see, these are all the shading elements I was talking about in Revit. Um, we use the roof to represent them. So they are being correctly recognized in the modeling software. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, and also you notice these are what the white portion of each wall is the spandrel panel. And um, you know, there are also door components in IESVE. But you know what you will do is create the correct construction um, and make sure the U factor is um, reasonable, and that should be it. <clears throat> and uh, here also you can do a uh, visual inspection to see if there is anything weird going on. Sometimes if the issue is big and you will be you know uh, able to spot them easily. Uh, looks like this model um, is all right. So let's close that. And then you need to do one other thing, which is uh, let IESVE generate a, a report for you to show you if there's anything wrong with any of these rooms. Um, because, you know, a visual inspection isn't enough. Sometimes, you know, you can recognize issues just by looking at it, right? So let's go to model it and you can generate a report here. We need everything in this section because it's related to the geometry. And this is going to generate a, an HTML file for you. So that's the report. And these are all the errors, um, possible errors you can run into um, with the geometry. Um, if any of these rooms are problematic, they are going to show up under um, any of these categories. So we have an issue here, which is this room's got a, an external hole. So that's what I created purposefully. Um, so let's go to this space and see what's going on. So level six residential unit 0611. And a good naming convention can also help a lot when you are trying to identify issue. So we are here and it looks like this is what's giving us a hard time. Let's look at the 3D rendering of it. Um, so yeah, that's the external hole. And, and this is because this room is not going up all the way to the next floor, right? It's level six, but it's not going up to level seven and it's kind of stopped halfway. So it's creating a hole um, on the ceiling and let's go to Revit next to fix it. So that's on level six. You can look at this space, click on this and look at its property. Um, <clears throat> so everything looks fine to me, except uh, we have a limit offset by two feet. So that means it's not going all the way up to uh, level seven. Uh, you know, um, the room is uh, stopped halfway. The height is offset by two feet. So we can simply just zero that out. And now this room should be occupying the entire volume. And we will export this model again and import into IESVE. And I will pause and come back later. All right, we have just imported the model into IESVE. Um, I think we can just let it generate the report and see if that error is still there. So nothing here. Um, so we have fixed it. Uh, that was a success. You know, just a quick demo to show you how to find the issue and go back to Revit to fix it. Um, you have like three um, uh, 
places to check the geometry. One is when you're exporting from Revit, you can check the GBXML file, um, go through the rooms, see if there are any warning signs, and then you can visually inspect your 3D rendering in IESVE. And then the last step is letting IESVE generate the report. So with all of these three, you should be able to find all the issues with the model. Um, yeah. And uh, one last thing I forgot to show you guys is uh, the glazing. So as I mentioned before, we have already assigned glazing in Revit. And I just wanted to show how they are assigned here as well. Um, so go to glazing. And if you look at any of these glazing types, they are what we created in Revit. And they have been imported. And if you, know, you pick one, it's going to be highlighted uh, here. So that's basically showing you know, once you assign them in Revit, and they will be assigned here in uh, the IESV model as well. The information is saved. So yeah, so that's it. Um, hopefully this is helpful. Um, you know, when you're uh, firstly starting working on this, um, using Revit to create the geometry, um, it will be a little bit iterative. You may find a lot of issues and you have to go back to fix things. But once you have done this a couple of times and work on um, uh, a few projects um, and you are really get the hang of it and it's going to really speed things up and especially for these bigger ones. So yeah, ho hopefully um, this is helpful and thanks for watching.